All right, today we're talking about some delayed games from 2023. You know the old Shigeru Miyamoto meme or quote, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. No, forget that. We're on to a new quote from Gabe Newell from Valve himself. This guy takes it a step further and says, and I quote, late is just for a little while, suck is forever. And ain't that the truth. So today we're talking about 10 games delayed to 2024. Starting off at number 10, let's kick off a pretty obvious one. It's Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. This is Rocksteady Games' long-awaited follow-up to the Batman Arkham games. Obviously, things kind of wrapped up with Batman Arkham Knight, but they're bringing the universe to a whole new location of Metropolis, focused around different characters. Obviously, this time, the Suicide Squad and the Justice League under Brainiac's control. There's a lot of potential there. There's also a lot of gameplay questions in terms of how does this game go down as a live service type game. But from what they've shown, it seems like it can potentially be a really fun single player or cooperative third person kind of running gun shooter melee thing. It definitely doesn't look like it plays like the Batman Arkham games, but it looks a lot crazier and it's got some ambition. And oh boy, this one has been delayed a lot. Not only was this one this year uh, delayed to February 2nd, 2024, that's the current release date, but this game initially had a 2022 launch window. And then later on, that was pushed to 2023. But now it seems like finally we're gonna see it in February 2024. Crazier things have happened, games can still get delayed, but maybe now we'll finally be able to play as Harley Quinn and maybe fight Rocksteady Arkham Universe's version of Superman. I, I don't know really what to expect from this game, to be honest, but we hope it's good and we hope we finally see it get its time in the sun in 2024. Next over at number nine, we have the Alone in the Dark reboot. I personally was actually pretty interested in this one. It could have went either way, frankly, but this was like a THQ Nordic backed, seemingly decent budget new Alone in the Dark game. It takes the classic original game with Edward Carnby and the haunted Louisiana mansion and stuff and turns it into a big third person action survival horror game. It looks very much like in the same vein of a Resident Evil 2 remake or something like that. And the two leads are played by famous actors, Jodie Comer and David Harbour, which David Harbour actually seems to be on record as a gamer. So I don't, maybe that'll translate over to his performance. I don't know, but I was curious to see how this one really shook out. And it had a great release date, October 25th, which was absolutely perfect for the horror game Halloween season. But uh, publisher THQ Nordic also realized that that was a jam packed month filled with a ton of kick-ass games releasing. And so with that, the publisher developer decided to push Alone in the Dark to January 16th, 2024. They said it wasn't a delay because of like finishing the game or technical problems or anything like that. It was all about the release date. It was smack in the middle of Alan Wake 2, City Skylines 2, Spider-Man 2, following up like Assassin's Creed Mirage right there, uh, Lords of the Fallen, Ghost Runner 2. It goes on and on. Alone in the Dark really just wouldn't have fit in that month. I know I wouldn't have had a minute to play it. So thankfully, now we'll be checking it out in January. I really I really hope this one is good because I just like third person survival horror games. And for the Alone in the Dark franchise to have a big comeback, that would be great. I think that would be a win-win. So for now, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Next up at number eight, we have Skull and Bones. Ubisoft's next pirate game has been in the works for a long time. According to GameSpot, in October during Ubisoft's earnings briefing, they announced that Skull and Bones is delayed again and will now launch during the company's Q4 2023-2024. So in layman's terms, that'll be between January and March of 2024. This is the newest delay, technically. Uh, before this, it was scheduled for fiscal year 2024, which technically meant it could squeak in before 2024, but now Ubisoft has confirmed that 2024 might finally be the year. And I say might finally because Skull and Bones has been in the works for so long. This weird little multiplayer pirate game that we still don't even totally know what the deal is um, started development in 2013. It was actually officially revealed in 2017 and the plan was for it to be released in 2018 and then 2019, and then 2021, and then so on and so forth. We're hoping this game finally sees the light of day just because like our stance here is that we like pirate video games and there aren't enough of them. So if this one turns out to release finally and actually be pretty good, it's a win. If not, then maybe it's another stinker for Ubisoft. I mean, God knows how long and how much time and money they spent on this thing. I don't know if I can live up to Ubisoft's corporate expectations, but hopefully they release a decent game. So like I said, that remains to be seen, but as of right now, it seems like 2024 or might finally be the year, but I'll believe it when I see it with this one at this point. 
Next over at number seven, we have Persona 6, which never really got like technically delayed. This one's a little bit more complicated, a little less public facing, uh, but Persona 6 was actually confirmed to be in development by creators Atlas uh, back in the summer of 2021. Since that, we haven't really heard much from it other than rumors and speculation where a lot of people thought this would be the year. There was an insider rumor on some forums that, that had gotten some things right around Atlas in the past that said Persona 6 has potentially been delayed past 2023. And then along with that, uh, content creator, YouTuber, Nate the Hate also, someone who sometimes gets some scoops right, uh, said that Persona 6 is now 2024. Again, this is a simple one. It's a lot of rumors and speculation and stuff we'll link in the description down below. Don't know too much what's really going on yet, but some people were stoked for 2023 and it really seems like it's 2024 because we haven't heard a single thing. So technically, yeah, but let's move on. Next over at number six, we have Destiny 2 The Final Shape. Uh, this is the big like climactic expansion for Destiny 2 with like this big conclusion with the bad guy, the witness and everything that this game has been building to for a couple of years now. This one actually was already expected to be in 2024, like it was slated for February, uh, but now it's been pushed to summer 2024. Some of this comes off of the heels of the news of Bungie laying off a substantial portion of their development studio. Uh, they've also delayed that other game they were working on, Marathon. So there's been some speculation that trouble has been brewing there, but it's, it does seem like Bungie is at least trying to really get things right with this final expansion. And so according to Bloomberg, June of 2024 is when we're gonna see the final shape uh, finally take place. I can't speculate as a non-Destiny fan, like what this thing will bring, what people will really want from it. But with Destiny 2, with Bungie just being a unique games as a service, type model and developer that has actually gotten it right, uh, the entire industry is definitely going to be watching this one for sure. Next over at number five, we have a game called Flintlock. This is that kind of Souls-like fantasy action RPG thing uh, that had a pretty heavy showcase during an Xbox game presentation. This was by the developers that made Ashen, a, a game that released to, you know, mixed opinions, but it, it was kind of like a co-op RPG adventure with a unique vibe. Flintlock seems to be going in a different direction because this just looks video game as hell. I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's like you're a magical girl with pirate weapons fighting giant crabs and creatures. And sometimes you have a magical axe and cool weapons. I don't know, there's something here. The combat does look pretty compelling, but ultimately I'll admit I did kind of forget about it or I forgot what it was called after it was announced and shown off. Flintlock was intended and expected for an early 2023 arrival, but we haven't seen it. And now the developers, A44 Games, said that the game is now launching in 2024. Their quote is, it's important to our whole team that Flintlock is a special experience and we owe it to ourselves and to all of you who have been following the game since we announced it to make it the most impressive and unforgettable it can be. And again, that goes back to me saying that I kind of forgot what the game was, uh, but it does have a unique spin of kind of like magic and gunpowder combined into this fantasy RPG adventure. So they can do something with that for sure, especially if they have more time to work on it. And again, 2023 was a crowded year, so we'll wait for Flintlock. It could be something. Next at number four, we have Arc 2. This is the follow-up to, of course, the massive mega hit Ark Survival Evolved, one of the most popular mainstream survival games. You can get it on basically any platform, and it's just a weird, crazy survival game. Well, people were really looking forward to the follow-up. It was announced a few years back. Vin Diesel's gonna be in the game. We haven't really found out too much about it since, but the developers have been hard at work on it, and it was expected to be 2023, but now it has been delayed to 2024. Now, according to an official statement provided by the developers, apparently a big cause for the delay is some of their struggles with switching the game over to Unreal Engine 5. Unreal Engine 5, of course, as a lot of you guys probably know, is an advanced tool set that game makers use to build games. It's got a lot of new, shiny, fancy technology with it that undoubtedly makes things more complicated, but ultimately results in some better looking games. The developer said, and I quote, as we learn more about the engine and develop the sequel, we have adapted our workflows and adjusted our pipelines to accommodate this new next generation paradigm. And because of everything that involves, we need more time for development. I think if there's any game out there that can afford a development time right now, it's Arc 2, considering, again, the big hit of the original game and the fact that they released a kind of next generation version of the game not too long ago called Arc Survival Ascended. So you can keep yourself busy on PC still, but also now PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S consoles. If you're just dying for the next Arc game and you just want to kill dinosaurs and play with your poop and make weird men, I don't know. I've only, <laughs> everything I know of Arc, I know from watching YouTube Let's Play videos and 
and Twitch streams, and it is a strange game. I'm curious to see if Arc 2 can continue that strangeness. Thankfully, maybe we'll find out in 2024. Next down at number three, we have Pragmata. This is a Capcom game where there wasn't too much known about it. A lot of people were kind of dubbing it Capcom's Death Stranding. It had beautiful art and design and aesthetics and strange sci-fi elements, but nobody could really pin down quite what it was because Capcom didn't really say too much. We knew it was a sci-fi third person game and that was really it. Well, during a kind of Capcom showcase presentation thing last June, the developer showed off a little bit of the game, uh, but then delayed it indefinitely. They did it in a pretty charming and interesting way by showing a little piece of paper in game uh, that had the release year of 2022 scratched out, and then it had the year of 2023 also scribbled out, and then a big question mark with somebody writing a little note that says, very sorry, with a sad face. I mean, that's one way to do it in a very cutesy way, but uh, I don't know if it was like development during COVID or ambition. Uh, something about this game is taking them a lot longer. Maybe they're still trying to figure out what it is. Who knows? I just want to know what the deal is with this one, but it seems like we're going to be definitely waiting till at least 2024 before we hear something about it, and then it may not even release in 2024. Next over at number two, much to some people's dismay, the massive space RTS Homeworld 3 has been delayed to 2024. In case you missed this one, uh, this happened back in the summer, where in an FAQ, the developers uh, Blackbird said that they're really trying to live up to the pressure and like just the awesomeness of the previous games. And they said, and I quote, this work takes time, especially when we are raising the bar on what players will experience in the Homeworld universe. Homeworld 3 was originally intended for the first half of 2023, but now it's pushed to February 2024, specifically so, and I quote, that we deliver the quality experience that fans deserve. It's been a really long time since a proper numbered new Homeworld game. Fans have been waiting for a really long time for this, so, you know, a couple more months pushing into next year, I don't think it's gonna kill them. Hopefully, when it releases, the game will keep them busy for years to come after that. Now down to number one, we have Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, where during Gamescom of this year, uh, the developers GSC Game World did announce officially that they're delaying it to 2024. It is now expected to launch in the first quarter of 2024, and that feels like a more solid bet because you can pre-order. That doesn't always mean it's a done deal, of course, but there is that, but this comes after a bunch of delays, specifically because the developers are primarily based in Ukraine. They've been pretty forefront documenting their struggles in terms of them being forced to relocate and, and dealing with the conflict, but seemingly they've had their heads down and they're focusing on making a great game, no matter what tries to get in their way. And that's admirable, especially considering like with some of the newer videos and trailers they put out, Stalker 2 looks absolutely incredible. I've been saying with this one, take all the time you need, obviously for the struggles, but of course, just to make it awesome. We've waited a long time for a new Stalker game and it's hard to live up to those original games, just like that unique PC pedigree that they really had. So again, taking the time they need is great and thankfully it's shaping up to be pretty awesome. And hopefully we really finally see it now in, like I said, the first quarter of 2024. But those are a bunch of games that have been pushed into 2024 this year. So uh, let's talk about it down in the comments. Are there some other games out there that have been delayed that you're upset to hear about? Remember what Gabe Newell said, late is just for a little while, suck is forever. Uh, let's talk about any delayed games down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. Let us know. But if you enjoyed this video and you like talking games with us every day, clicking a like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell as well, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.